Hi there. Today we're going to be having a look at Rawls' theorem. We're going to be looking at the formal definition of his theorem. We're going to get an intuitive understanding of the theorem. And then finally, we're going to be looking at a proof that can be used to prove Rawls' theorem. The formal definition of Rawls' theorem says that if f is a continuous function over a closed interval, a to b, such that f of a is equal to f of b, and it is differentiable on the open interval a to b, then there exists some c, which is an element of a to b, such that the derivative at point c is equal to zero. So what exactly is Rolle's theorem trying to tell us? Well, if we have a function where the endpoints over an interval are equal, it is continuous over this interval, and it is differentiable across the whole interval, then there must be a point, which we can call c, where the derivative of this point must equal zero. If you watched my last video on Fermat's theorem, then you should be able to see that from a function such as this one, we have a local maximum at c, and using Fermat's theorem, we know that this derivative at point c must be equal to zero. Okay, but what if we have a local minimum instead? Again, using Fermat's theorem, we know that at point C, the derivative is equal to zero. What if we have a local maximum and minimum in our interval? Again, at C1, the derivative will equal zero, and at C2, the derivative will equal zero. Finally, what if our function is just simply a horizontal straight line? So the endpoints are still equal, but the function does not change height whatsoever. It's obvious that the gradients must then be equal to zero since it is a complete straight line where the endpoints are equal. And therefore, for all the points on this function, the derivative will also equal zero. An important note is that the function must be differentiable across the whole interval. If we had a function like this, where right at the lowest point of the graph, there is a sudden change from increasing to decreasing, it means that at this point, we are not able to differentiate the function, since there's no smooth transition from an increasing to decreasing function. And thus, Rolle's theorem does not apply to a function such as this, because the function is not differentiable across the whole interval. We are now ready to tackle our proof to prove Rolle's theorem. This proof has most of its thinking derived from the OpenStax calculus textbook. And I will leave a link in the description to this textbook so that you can see the proof that they lay out in their book. First, we need to do a bit of setup before we can start tackling our proof straight away. So we need to first suppose that we have a function f which is defined from reals to reals, which is continuous over a closed bound interval a to b, and that it is differentiable over the open interval a to b, such that f of a is equal to f of b, which is equal to k. So what we are saying here is that we have defined a function for which Rolle's theorem can be applied to that the endpoints are equal, and we're going to make it equal to a variable k so that we can further reference it within our proof. We're going to tackle three cases in this proof. Case one, which says that the function f of x is going to be equal to k for all x, which is an element of the interval a to b. Essentially, a completely horizontal straight line. In case two, we're going to say that there exists some x, which is an element of the open interval a to b, such that f of x is greater than k. So the function has a local maximum. And in case three, we are going to do the same as case two, except that f of x is smaller than k. So the function has a local minimum. Case one is our easiest case to tackle. Since f of x is equal to k, for all x, which is an element of a to b, then the derivative of any point 
x must be equal to 0 for all x, which is the element of a to b. And this should be plainly obvious. We do not need to do any further explanation than what I've put here. Our second case is where things get a little bit more complicated, but things are still relatively simple. So to recall, in case 2, we are saying that there exists some x, which is an element of a to b, such that f of x is greater than k. So what do we know? Well, f is a continuous function over the closed interval a to b. And therefore, we can use the extreme value theorem. And as a quick recap, the extreme value theorem says that if our function is continuous over an interval, then there must be an absolute maximum or minimum that occurs somewhere along the interval. And therefore, using this theorem, we know that our function has an absolute maximum. We also know that since f of x is greater than k, the absolute maximum is greater than either endpoints. And therefore, the absolute maximum cannot occur at either of the endpoints. Thus, the absolute maximum has to occur at some interior point c within the open interval a to b. Because f has a maximum point at c, and f is differentiable at c, because the function is differentiable across the whole interval, then using Fermat's theorem, which if you aren't familiar with, you can look at my previous video about Fermat's theorem, we know that at point c, the derivative must be equal to zero. In case three, we deal with a function that has a local minimum instead of a local maximum, like in case two. If you wanted to be very careful, you could do a proof for case three. However, it is virtually analogous to case two, except for the fact that we have a minimum instead of a maximum. So normally you may end your proof here, describing the fact that case three is virtually analogous to case two. And therefore, since we have covered our three cases required for our proof, we have proved Rolle's theorem. I hope you have enjoyed this video, that it has been insightful and that you have learnt more about Rolle's theorem, and I will see you all in the next video.